of our experience with their soybeans and with GMO canola. And we know what would happen also with uh, GMO wheat. And that's why uh, other people in around the world can benefit from our experience. We don't have no choice left. Our choice is gone. But the people in many parts of the world still have a choice. Globalization has enabled the Maltese to gain control over seeds in the so-called third world. The Asian market is to be developed with genetically modified cotton. However, the chemical corporations are meeting with unexpected resistance. of our seeds, our medicinal plants, our other useful species is taking place is through genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is a false promise whose high price has already been paid by the farmers of this country. Multinationals have grabbed the seed economy, which used to be a farmer's economy, it used to be a women's economy, and now are bringing unreliable, untested seeds to the market pushing our farmers to suicide. We happen to be sitting in the middle of all the seed industry shops right here. Monsanto this side, Syngenta shops that side. The next lane is all selling seeds of suicide. Vandana Shiva, with a PhD in physics and winner of the Alternative Nobel Prize, has dedicated herself to small Indian farmers and the preservation of biodiversity for almost 20 years. In the meantime, she has become a formidable and loathed opponent of internationally operating agrochemical groups, such as Monsanto, Syngenta, Conagra, Cargill, Bayer and others. Cotton farmers from central India are demonstrating angrily in front of the branch offices of large multinational agrochemical groups. Many of them are on the verge of ruin due to BT cotton, genetically modified cotton from Monsanto, first approved in 2002, which rendered them a disastrous crop. Just as with the introduction of chemicals in farming, they now fear they will run into debt, the only escape from which is suicide. In the last few years, thousands of farmers have committed suicide. Others try desperately to pay off their debts by selling a kidney. The US corporation Monsanto, that had acquired the old established Indian seed company Mahaiko, promised that the new genetically modified cotton plants would produce higher yields and ensure better quality. Thanks to gene manipulation, the use of pesticides could be reduced as the plants produced their own insecticide. Expecting higher crop yields, the farmers were persuaded to purchase Monsanto seeds at quadruple the price. They took out loans with banks and seed dealers at enormously high interest rates. Yet the anticipated bumper crop failed to materialize. Diseases and insect-ridden plants forced the farmers to use more of the expensive chemicals. Their expenditures rose, driving their bank debts higher at the same time. This had not been mentioned by the video cassettes distributed freely all over India promoting Monsanto's genetically modified cotton, the Bulgard cotton. They only promised the farmers happiness and prosperity.
plant is uh, embossed with uh, all sorts of diseases like uh, trips, aphids and uh, jacids. So there are you see, many bowls which are falling down before it becomes, uh, before it be yields the cotton. Uh, the price of this is uh, 1600 rupees. Mamul rakha like Mamul rakha like that, I have 400 rupees. That's a 400, other varieties, you know, that is 400 rupees. 350 to 400 rupees. This is bullworm, attack of bullworm. So what the company claims, this is variety is resistant to bullworms. This is a bullworm. Bullworm in the bull guard cotton. That's a BT cotton. Since he owes uh, money to the bank, they will not give you in the uh, future. No, he has uh, the, 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 the is left with two options. One is to sell away a, a part of his uh, property and clear the debts, or consume uh, poison and uh, take poison and commit suicide. He has left only. He has two alternatives. Either commit suicide or uh, repay by selling away or disposing the property. The saddest thing for me is that every failure from the p perspective of a poor peasant and a small farmer in this country is not a failure from the perspective of these companies. I in fact traveled with one of them about two decades ago. And they said to us, it doesn't matter if the crops don't do well, it's all right, they'll come back for more of our seeds. The farmer gets wiped out, the land gets wiped out, the company's markets grow. And that, I think, is the real tragedy of genetic engineering, that the failure of agriculture is a market success for the corporations. An interview with Mahaiko Monsanto India on the topic of crop yields did not take place. The speaker for Monsanto Europe mailed the following statement. We emphatically repudiate any current allegation to the effect that, in particular, genetically modified cotton grades have caused bad harvests, assessing this to be a failure of technology in India. Any further interviews with Monsanto Europe and America were refused by headquarters. Farming is kind of like an art form as well. I feel like I'm an artist when I'm out in my field and you know you, you do things creatively, you innovate, uh, it's not just growing food, it's uh, enjoying the type of occupation, it's, it's understanding the soil, understanding the wildlife, understanding the importance of, uh, of protecting everything that you do. That's why we adopted as our motto for our farm uh, holistic stewardship for abundant life. Uh, the stewardship aspect is that you that you respect the rights of your fellow man and how best to do that but provide your fellow man with